part of the Press Play Podcast Network. Look up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's... This is Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. This is Mark Wade, writer of Superman Birdwine. You're listening to The Krypton Report. That is not only Superman Day, but it's also the 10th anniversary of Man of Steel. Check out our website on Facebook for the information to join as we will be updating it, our live Man of Steel rewatch. We'll be streaming and we'll be making an online party to rewatch Man of Steel. So please add that to your calendar. And remember, look up in the sky! <laughs> Get ready as Krypton Report prepares for Flash Week. That's right, from Friday to Friday in June, starting this ninth, we will be doing a special one episode per day focusing on The Flash. We will have two exclusive Patreon episodes that tie into Flash Week. You can sign up for our Patreon for a dollar. We will have special guests for each episode, so get ready for Flash Week. Welcome to the Krypton Report. I am your host, Tyler, Superman of Blue, the man of tomorrow. And with me is James, the man of steel, the man in red, not Santa Claus, not Shazam, but Superman in red, Mr. Cole. What's up, dude? The best man in red. Yeah, the best man in red, because he's like a wedding. <laughs> <laughs> a red wedding? Ooh, what's so, many, <laughs> so many references we can make. Why all of a sudden, like, I decide to record and my crypto starts barking. So I'm going to make sure crypto is covered. The dog is crazy. We just let him out. Hold on. And we're back. Crypto was crazy. Kids are taking care of him. But hey, that's life here in the house. And that's what happens every day. Welcome to New Krypton. <laughs> <laughs> that's how it feels. Such is life. Such is life. Such is life. But hey, we got some cool news coming up. The Flash tickets are on sale. And the third and final trailer dropped. It was pretty awesome. You know, I liked it. I liked it. I liked that it didn't give too much away. Um, like it's like I told you before, it's what's interesting is with each trailer, it's like they're showing the same scene, but like a moment before or a moment later. So you're not exactly you know, it's like you're not really getting too much new, but you're not getting the same stuff. I mean, you are, but you're not, I guess. Yeah. So I mean, like, I heard somebody questioning which Barry is in the suit and when. Like, because of the way he gets excited and everything and, and saying that it looked like Barry 2 was in the new suit at some point. Mm. And I, I'm not... I'm not sure, but I also did recognize something um, where they, where Barry too is in the spray painted Batman suit, definitively. Mm. So I'm not sure, like, but the the color of the lightning, the the way it goes from blue to to gold at different times, I'm very. Um, very curious as to the direction of, of of how these things are going to work. How closely some points may be to Flashpoint. Yeah. You know, if they are or not. I'm um a lot of questions uh it, coming into this movie. <laughs> I know, right? Like I I'm right there with you. Because I feel like I'm trying to piece it together myself. Because, like, the lightning is what's throwing me off at times. Because I'm like, what, um, like, what's going on? Like, why is his lightning this color here when we should definitely be experiencing the other color of lightning? So, I, I don't know. I'm, it's weird to me. So, but <clears throat> I don't, 
I'm, I don't know. It makes me more intrigued and more excited for the film, actually. Yeah. yeah, I, I'm not like so much trying to figure out the movie before I see it as it just does raise a lot of questions that I'm waiting to see how they are answered, mm-hmm. you know, because I, I, you know, me, I like to see what the movie gives me, not go into the movie expecting something and then be disappointed. Because it didn't (laughs) match up with what I thought it should be or what I thought they were telling me it was going to be. (laughs) I totally agree. I just want to make sure that whatever the movie's communicating to me makes sense. So that's one of our biggest um, just things, period, is does the movie make sense? I mean, from from all the speculation out there, it it probably is going to make a a great deal of sense. You think? <laughs> Man, oh, it's house house. It's crazy to me how many of these screeners that they're doing. You know. Um. Yeah. That that is kind of. Um. It's kind of just blown my mind, in all honesty, because I'm like, the, that is a lot of uh, information. Like, that's a lot of people that you're banking on not to say sp- anything. Yeah, <laughs> spoil your movie. You know, so I'm, it, yeah, it really kind of blows my mind away. So, yeah. But, um, I mean, I just, uh, I hope since they're publicizing how many that they're really confident in the movie. And I mean, that makes me excited, more excited to see it. I mean, yeah, (laughs) I mean, (laughs) they have to be, to be at the point where they're like, well, to show it that much and to have so many people, you know, saying that it's great without any specifics. I mean, that's kind of, uh, it's kind of uplift, uplifting. It is. Had a very toward uh, past with Warner Brothers and DC over the last 10 years. Yeah. <laughs> We've all had our so battles. It's refreshing to kind of feel like you're going to be seeing a movie that most people are going to um, enjoy. That we're not going to get just trash talk across the board. For nitpicky reasons. It's true. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm still getting through this crap. All right. And then, of course, the Flash series has ended. The Arrowverse is over. And it's kind of a. I don't know. I'm playing catch up. Yeah. I know you told me just to watch the last five. But Mm -hmm. I'm watching all of them. I'll be honest, I skipped the Dreamer one. So, no, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing that one. I'm not, because Barry's not even in it. (laughs) Oh, well, okay, now that's a little disappointing. That's what I'm saying, like, there's a whole three-episode stretch where Barry's not even there. And that's when I was like, after watching one of those, I was like, no, I'm not doing this. Like, and that's when I was just like, go and just... Uh, a three episode stretch on the it's final like, season of The Flash where The Flash isn't there? It's I know there's at least two episodes where he's not there and then I think the one there's one where he comes back and it's very he's not really The Flash it's like Barry doing nothing it's a really weird episode hmm. so like I was just like really upset like okay why are you doing this to me uh, I don't know <laughs> it's, a, it's a CW final season problem for the Arrowverse. I guess. But, so the Arrowverse is over. And how do you feel? I don't know. Maybe maybe they just couldn't, you know, fall back on the dramatic irony because it's the final season. They couldn't figure out how to write it. <laughs> There's a lot of speculation we could throw in there. So, Well, I'm not done yet, so... I'm not done yet with the Flash final season. 
Um, I'm lucky to get a. I, I get to watch maybe one episode, um, at a time, and I gotta, and I split it up between, like breaks at work and stuff. So it's tough. It is. Did you get but a chance to? I, do I, your... I'm giving it. I'm giving it its due. It's its your... final season. Did you get a chance to do your rank the Arrowverse? Um, no, sir. I apologize. We'll do that next time. So, Action Comics 1055. We're catching up. What we got, James? Take us there, Sketch. 1055 is pretty neat. (laughs) Take us there. Cyborg Superman. Um, interesting thing, Cyborg Superman is like psychically controlling remote controlling a cyborg superman unmade body from the phantom zone which is crazy who <laughs> right um it did say in in this issue that um lex it, lex was imprisoned yes um, in the, the in return the, of kal-el special the one off special or... yeah the kal-el returns Okay, so we were questioning where where he did get imprisoned. So it's something we forgot. My thing is we just read too much. Uh, too much stuff. And it's throwing us off. Oh, I I do not doubt that one bit. That's really what I've come to realize so much. is I'm like, I'm at a point where I'm like, okay, Tyler. You're reading so much stuff that when you... If you don't, like, read it, turn around and review it. You're getting slightly little things missed and messed up. Well, I mean, just how many different eras you're reading, as well as, you know, like, I'm uh, reading books outside of DC. Mm hmm. You know? Yeah. Uh, different image and Marvel books, um, and heck, even novels at times. Like,. <laughs> But yeah, so. But yeah, tell tell us about it. Um, so they're trying to find uh, Metallo's sister. Um, I like the opening though. We've got some. We've got the the fighting on the street in A Town. Um, we got uh, Keenan, Connor, um, Natalie, and John all out here, um, destroying all these unmade. Uh, they're they're all dead. They're all robotic. There's there's nothing living about them. So they're able to kind of you know just destroy them. Then we get to talk about some of the flashback. We get to see some old school Superman in the black suit mm-hmm. fighting alongside Connor. Um, they go to the fortress and they call on the Eradicator. Um, I thought that was cool. And I also think it's interesting how. It just seems like if you bring back one character from the death of Superman, you have to bring back all of them. <laughs> I mean, they really are in this. And this whole thing, like, there's been a lot coming back after the 30th anniversary of the death. Yeah. You know, the, the Doombreaker story, this with having um, Connor so closely relate, uh, so closely tied in and him getting his own uh, ongoing book. Uh, and steel being very prominent as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so everybody's fighting. They use the Eradicator. What's really funny here is um, uh, I sense in this chamber the presence of a sullied clone and your own half Terran progeny. Is it your wish that the wish these abominations be called as it as is fitting? I know, and he's like, no. <laughs> Um, yeah, that was pretty, that was pretty intense. Like, or well, like straightforward. Um, they use the eradicator to find, uh, the body. They believe, you know, they use the, the blood of Kal-El to create the body that cyber, um, that cyborg Superman is controlling. 
Um, you get John talking to Otho about uh, his childhood, kind of how he became who he was, um, how he felt powerful, and you know how he got there. And you know, Corbin actually um, is having a civil discussion about you know being good with these children. Mm -hmm. So, um, it's interesting, you know, cause that would never happen with Superman, but having another, <laughs> these young members of the family kind of reaching a character like this. Oh, I know. It, I, I found it just interesting period. Like, you know. yeah, Johnson's run on action has been, um, extremely well, extremely good. Extremely like, well done. I feel like every writer who comes on new to any of these major title superhero books, they all pick a villain that they want to redeem. Like how um, Tom King worked on trying to re like do the whole Clayface thing in Detective when Rebirth started. Right. So I feel like they are all like, Everybody just pick a villain. Let's see if we can redeem them. Well, you know, I mean, there's so many, and they've, they've been around for so long. Um, you know, and none of these things ever have to stick true. I mean, it's... With, with comics. <laughs> yeah. Um, so they come face-to-face -face with Henshaw and a weaponized Tracy. Uh, Johnny, I can't control my body. Please help me. And she is apparently, she's a weapon. She's an unmade weapon against uh, Superman. Being controlled by Cyborg. Uh, and that is the end of the action bit. Mm -hmm. So... Our next story, I mean, it's not not a, entirely too much happens. Um, they find out that uh, she has, uh, that Glenna has John, um, and that she wants Superman to um, save her throne for her. Yeah, I mean, that that one was kind of like, Okay, and a and a new revelation that she that she's the one who killed her family and took over. Like they want her done because she is she is the full evil. Yeah, uh, like I, I I was thinking that it was her family that maybe was evil and they were trying to keep, and maybe she was the last person and she wanted to keep the throne. But no, she took it. She killed her family and took the throne. And it seems like the people are <laughs> objecting to that. Yeah. Yeah. So, the revelation that John kept the Doombreaker bone, and it's what drew him, but the most interesting bit of the story at the moment was John's abduction and them finding out the truth there. Yeah. Uh, so and then we get Steelworks, Metropolis Skyline Steelworks Exhibition. Um, I I am really interested in this book. I mean, I these little backups are really getting me hyped for this book. Uh, I mean, yeah, I feel you. The, the whole thing is a demonstration, um, Natalie and, and Connor um, attacking shields, um, John Henry Irons talking about the future, about being a solution and, you know, not a corporation. Um, and they, he reveals that the demonstration was in the building that he was having a meeting in and they didn't feel a thing. Yeah, that's what I love. They're like, oh, this CGI 
and he's like, "What CGI?" <laughs> yeah. Yep, it was he's, all happening right outside. He's like, "What are you talking about, CGI?" And so, boom. I think something that might be a problem future in the in in the future of this storyline is the fact that he's got all these AI controlled robots, which seems I like oh that again. Okay, you know, like I don't know. I just seems like that's something we've seen a lot. Yeah. Know? I mean, it's like the Iron Legion protocol, it's like uh, Ultron, it's, you know, just out there doing crowd control and, and protecting people. So. Um, but we get the end, and, you know, I think we called it on who it was, but I wasn't, they made it seem ominous, and I'm not sure why. Yeah. Because it was Mr. Terrific at the end of the last chapter. Yeah, they do make it ominous as if it's like... And I guess, I don't know, my thing is, like, I like that Steel's got his own steel works and everything. But then at the same time, after a while, you're just kind of like... Everybody has their own business. Everybody has their own corporation. Like, you're just kind of like, okay, who doesn't have their own you know, corporation or business or is a science tech person. Right. If it wasn't, if it was, if it was that easy to, uh, to, to develop the new greatest corporation that helps people and develop the newest technologies. <laughs> I'm just like, I don't know, it just gets old after a while because I'm like, everybody's a genius. How about when someone who's an idiot gets becomes a superhero? What do they have to go through to become better, you know? Huh? Just let me become a superhero, I'll tell you. <laughs> be like, we will wait for your memoirs. Exactly. Because I feel like they even try that sometimes with, like, Ant-Man, but they're still like, ah, but he's still smart. We can't, yeah, we can't go too far. Can't make him too much of a every man. He still has to be extremely smart. Oh, of course. But, yeah, so I really like this book. Action's been great. I'm a little bummed because I'm not as thrilled by the Jurgens story as I was hoping to be. I was really, yeah. really hoping to be, like, just head over heels, excited with the fact that he's back and he's doing, you know, the story at the time point when we were really excited for it to happen and we just, we all really loved that book, you know, and the fact that we're just kind of like, Okay. Yeah, it was it was the shortest talking point, you know, in that book. I mean, it really felt like there was nothing to really you know, talk about in that issue. But, yeah. Well, I mean, it is it's a handful of pages. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um it is really only a uh a, a third of what a single issue would be. So I mean, you get a slow chunk every now and again when that's when that's the case. Now, did you read Superman Lost number two? I did. Actually, last time I read it, um, I told you I didn't, and I did. <laughs> My notes are, you know, the biggest things with Clark being on the floor and, like, holding his, like, and like we see instances of him holding the breath, and it's like he's, he was gone for, like, 20 years, and I'm like, so this is supposed to be like the Odyssey for Superman. And I just, I don't know. I don't not like it, but at the same time, I'm not really thrilled by where this is going. Like him lost. And it's just kind of this, hey, this is what happened story. I don't know. How are you feeling on the book? Um, I mean, the concept that he has... um uh that he's lived you know 20 years without without lois 
um, that his his world, his perception of time. Um, I mean, it, it twenty years would be a lot. I think um, the interesting. I do think the like holding your breath. Um, I mean, if you had to do that quite a lot, it would be um, second habit, you know? It would just be habit to do it. There's some interesting things that, that draw me in, but also, like, he's he's on this planet, and he can't really hardly communicate with people. Sees lots of different things and and a farm, but it's just, yeah. Um, it was it was still world building in this issue, you know. Yeah. Um and and world building and the fact that he's at the end of the issue he leaves that planet so it's like spent a lot of time with people there. And then nothing. Yeah. Um, I don't think there was like something he was supposed to ultimately learn in this issue, you know, something that was going to help him understand yeah. what was going on because there weird. wasn't. <laughs> it was weird. All right, what else? That's that's pretty much it for it. Okay, moving on. Yeah, it was it was a it was a world building issue, and he and he leaves the world. So, see where it goes in issue three. I guess so. I mean, the concept of of the Odyssey for Superman um, is interesting. Um, I want to see how it parallels, you know, but as the Odyssey, it's a long, it's a long journey and we're going to see it. It's still got a long way to go. It's got 10 more issues. And yeah, I just. We'll go. I mean, I'll I'll read it, but I'm not like this is definitely this is definitely the app. Like this is not in nowhere, shape, or form. Am I wanting like excited to read this or look this up? Like this is all stuff from the app. For <laughs> the app. Like this is why I have that. I app. mean, yeah, it's a beautiful thing to have the app for something that. You know, you you want to read, but, you know, you don't feel that, at least at the moment. I mean, it's already, you pay for it. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, It's hard to talk in terms of, like, buying things like that and having this. But right. having this, I read World's Finest 14. <laughs> okay. Oh, you did? All right. Cool. Yes. Yes, Take I us did. there. I'm just not talking as much because I'm still getting over this crap. So I'm just kind of letting James take some lead here. So take us uh, there, James. So Metamorpho is fighting um, somebody named Dread. It seems like he, it seems like he wants to kill him. Um, Metamorpho is looking actually pretty angry with his red eyes. Um, we've got the, uh, we've got a discussion between Bruce and Superman about, uh, publishing the article, um, you know, that, uh, Clark is a reporter, there's rules, um, just because he knows a Superman, he can't refute it as Clark. <laughs> Which is kind of funny, but we get it. Right. I mean, it's, it's. I like how they they force them to use the proper channels. <laughs> you know, 
by having a secret identity. Like they they'll do what it takes to prove it. Mm -hmm. Um, Bruce has a conversation with Oliver Queen, and he doesn't believe it's him. That was a really cool part. Yeah. Um, he he discusses later about um him talking with multi um multiple um billionaires. Uh, what does he say? Um. How many people? I know he mentioned people here. Uh, yeah, he, I mean, he called, He says, Lauren Jupiter, Ted Cord, Steve Dayton reached out to nearly a dozen billionaires. Um, and I don't think any of them are who they say they are. Um, and uh, Clark views Simon Stagg's body and realizes that it's not Stagg who's dead in the... Um, in the casket. So they go about setting, um, you know, finding out who framed Mason, potentially. And it's Professor Ivo. Yeah, I thought that was interesting. Like, that, no. I didn't see coming. No. Um, making more lifelike androids. Um, Superman and Robin... Uh, take one location and Metamorpho and Batman take another. Um, they go after uh, Rex. What was his last name? Magnus. Magnus. I was saying, not Rex Manny. <laughs> Rex, Rex Magnus and his metal men. Um, and this is pretty. <laughs> this is pretty tough. Um, all of the metal men are stuck inside of what look like vats, probably mm. specially designed vats to keep each metal in a in a state they can't escape from. I thought that was pretty sweet and dark at the same time. Right. Um, and Superman and Robin are against uh, Ivo and a bunch of his androids, and we get... Um, uh, let's see. Uh, his his uh, his androids could um, mimic superpowers and mimic all of the abilities. Um, but he said, "Then I thought, why stop there? Uh, Mason can replicate only the elements in the human body, rather a limited menu." better for me to command a creation that can transform into ele any element on the periodic table and beyond, including kryptonite. Looks like a, a metamorpho android that can turn in, well, to kryptonite, among other things. But, you know, the most useful right now being kryptonite. Which I always thought was... Really interesting for Metamorpho and for um, Firestorm, whenever they use him correctly. They actually use Firestorm for what he's supposed to be. Right. And he can transmute on the periodic table of Earth. What other, any other, <coughs> excuse me, any other comics we got? Um. No, nothing for me right now. I, mean, I did read the uh, uh, Deceased run, mm. and that finished up. Um, you know, Tom Taylor takes some of his Elseworlds to interesting places. He does. Like, I like I read, it wasn't Taylor who wrote it, but, like, the whole DC Vampires thing ended really interesting. So... Not where I uh, suspected it would go, but it, it did end up somewhere interesting. Cool. Um, yeah, some things, some some characters. So you know how, you know how in the first year, um, Hal was killed and Canary became the Green Canary because mm. she was a Green Lantern. Yeah. Um. That happened in, in the first year of 
of um, deceased. And uh, so things like that, they shake up things like that. Not only, of course, do Damien, does Damien become Batman and, and John become Superman and Cassie become Wonder Woman, but there are um, definitely other character shakeups on a, on, on a cosmic level as to who does what and who becomes who. <laughs> hmm. The, uh, the, the final, this final chapter of the story, um, War of the Undead Gods, uh, the, the narrator of the whole thing, because they've all kind of got something like that, like somebody who's, who's talking for their port, for that portion of the deceased universe, the narrator of, of that kind of like grouping uh, is Alfred. Um, and it takes you somewhere interesting, and I think you should check it out. All right, all right. You, you I don't want to spoil that for you. So what else we got today is we are finally going to kick off our look at the Ruby Spears forgotten, for the most part, Superman cartoon. <laughs> um, you know, you know what my biggest note for this is? What? You know what? Go ahead. I'll, I'll get to, I'll get to that when you're when you're ready. <laughs> no, what, what you got? I said my biggest note for the Ruby Spears cartoon was I swear they took those um uh those biker guys uh-huh. and they took those character models and just changed them for the biker mice from Mars. Yeah, it kind of looks like it, doesn't it? Yeah, but the first episode is called "Destroy the Defendroids Slash the Adoption." Luther creates a robotic police force called the Defendroids and destroy the uh, Defendroids. So, James, tell us about this episode. Um, so, Luther creates some robots to try to uh, um, make Superman useless. Um, make Superman appear useless. Um, they arrive at... Um, crimes and disasters faster than Superman to save the day. Um, the reason being Lex Luthor is causing all of the accidents and disasters and knows where his robots should be and when. Yep. So they're able to be there already before Superman gets the chance to show up. Um, I mean, clearly, <laughs> clearly the, the route the episode was going to take. Um, but it is interesting how he tries to steal a billion dollars in gold off of his own train with his own droids. Like, like he publicizes the droids as being these, these saviors better than Superman, um, enough for the daily planet to print Superman quits. Also, you know, Lex Luthor will believe that he quit. Um, it's just kind of funny, <laughs> but yeah, he t- he he popularizes his his robots, and they're in the newspapers and everything. Um, but yet he uses them to kidnap Jimmy and Lois, shoot down their helicopter, and steal a train. It's kind of funny. <laughs> yeah. But in the end, he's like, you can't prove it. So it was a it was a programming malfunction. Is how it was. So. Yeah, it's it's Luther. What do we expect? Yeah, I mean, it's it's the crime, you know, it's the crime angle. The um, uh, that was before the the. Um, Lex Corp, Luther, is very much more like the um, Gene Hackman. Yeah, you know, greatest criminal mind. <laughs> <laughs> now, did, did the did the backup episode play for you? Uh no. The Kent, no. Nope. Where they adopt Baby Clark? 
Oh, no, no. Um, we're going to have to look into that. Uh, so All I got was the 19 minutes of the Defendroid. So the, the, the next part is that where the Kents take baby Clark to the orphanage, which I always thought was weird in the first place, like even back in the day comics, because Clark, you know, starts moving around, flying around. There's even one part where all these other people are like coming to adopt him. And he keeps doing weird stuff, and they're like, "Oh, we can't get no one to adopt him, you know." And the Kents try to, but they kind of talk him out of it because they're old, you know. They're too old. <laughs> can't you see that you're old? <laughs> um, and then, um, at one point, Baby Clark opens the like, um, what do you call it? The the window and he flies out and mom and pa wake up in the middle of the morning and there is the baby right there with him and then they eventually decide to adopt him it's only like a couple of minutes long but it, it's kind of cute but at the same time like i've never been a fan of like we're gonna take him to an orphanage and then we'll go back and adopt him because that just doesn't make a whole lot of sense but it is what it is <clears throat> All right. So the big the big one while we're here is of course Superman and Lois episode 9 The Dress. Now this episode was pretty heavy. Um I I like watched this with Jania and we had the interesting discussions um about it, you know, about the what do you call it the um just the thematic material about what Lois is going to, because we learned that she may be having a double mastectomy. And I felt like, I, I was like, did we miss something? Um, Like, was this mentioned before? Cause I, I felt like it was kind of just dropped on us. Like, I, I don't know if I missed it in a preview, like that this was an option or this was going to happen or if they were trying to shock us with it. Um, I don't know. I just really felt like it kind of, but it says the description is Superman and John Henry clash over how to handle Bruno Mannheim. Lois worries over an upcoming treatment and confides in Lana about her earlier courtship of Clark. So. Yeah. Um, the flashback portions of the episode uh, were sweet. Um, I like their relationship. Um, I, I like those, those flashbacks of their relationship back in Metropolis. Yeah, because we don't get any of that. No, it was it made for the greatest episode um of last season. Right? The it was last season. Yep. Yeah. No, it was the first season. Oh yeah, yeah, it was the first season. Um yeah, made for the greatest episode of the first season. <laughs> um you see that Clark buy the first time he ever buys a dress for someone it's for Lois. And Lois talks about how she felt so great in it and all this. And Yeah, uh, I love how he confided into um, Lana about how he bought it with by selling his baseball card collection. And she knew that that was important to him. Yeah, she's like, you're, you're Cal Ripken rookie. He's like, yep. She, so I, li- I like that part, too. Just it reinforcing that their friendship, you know, and everything and. Um, but then Lois wants to get rid of it because they're giving clothes away to people like the clothes drive and everything in town. And, you know, she talks about not feeling like a woman and really feeling like she can ever wear it again and everything. And it was, it was pretty heavy. And Clark said a lot of good things and it was emotional. And like I said, me and Jania had conversations about things. Um, so it definitely was a nice conversational starter. Thanks, Superman and Lois. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, it was it was tough to see her going through that uh, this episode. Um, I love the the con the you know the conversation between her and um, Lana, Lana helping her through it. They're even having a party um, at the Zumbas. <laughs> I was like, is that like a Hooters? Is what yeah. That is. And then she described Hooters. So I was like, yeah, it's Hooters. 
<laughs> I, I was like, because there used to be a place that was similar to that, like in Columbus, called like the twisted, the twisted kilt or something. It was kind of like a Hooters ass place that, like, a lot of my friends were like totally about going to. Yeah, and I was like, yeah, that's okay. You guys, I think there was a place like that over up here. I don't know if it's still open, but yeah, that was funny. And but meanwhile. I think you have the emotional stuff with Clark and Lois in this episode, but the action is really driven for the emotion of John Henry and what he's dealing with where Bruno, like the DOD will not let Bruno see his dying wife until he gives up the weapons and everything. Um, John Henry really takes the lead. Clark tries to kind of convince Bruno, let me do this, but John kind of goes behind their Clark's back, you know, with getting the a raid on Bruno's house when we find out that Bruno sent some thugs to Smallville after John Henry. And then meanwhile, the teenagers are deciding that they're going to sneak Nat and Mateo time to see each other. So I'm like, okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> them bumping heads with each other, like... She was just she was just there in Smallville when those guys showed up. Yeah. Um so to kinda like uh go at at her dad the way she does, like he did send those people. Um I mean it's all it's all pretty bad. It's it's heavily emotionally driven. Um you know, Bruno Mannheim made it personal for him, um, threatening to kill his family. Um, and then uh, sending people to Smallville. But I mean, it was it was a it was a deep epi- it was a heavy episode. My thought is you're sending people to Smallville, Bruno, like the people that you just literally were up against, like. No one's going to figure that out. Like, what are you thinking, dude? Right? Like, they, people were recording them on the phone, and um, their known associates for Bruno Mannheim, and they're attacking somebody in, in a small town. I was like, huh. You know. But, whatever. He's Bruno Mannheim. So. Yeah, he just, he feel he acts like he's untouchable, which, you know, I, I see, I know that a lot of the story is, is everything he's done is, like, has been unprovable, you know, how he's gotten his power, mm-hmm. but he, um, and, and you know what, I mean, I feel that it's appropriate due to the desperation this episode, you know, him trying to see his wife. Like, he's acting like somebody who has nothing to lose. But he does. That's what's going to get him in the end. Yeah, he almost uh, lost his son the way he was talking to him. Mm Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. That's what's going to get him. Let's see. It was heavy. That's all. I it did. it has. It's been a heavy season. Um, but oh, it's it's been the, very good. Did you get the Lois and Clark reference? Where Lois was sitting on her bed reading the Wanda Detroit, the Wanda Detroit novel. Oh no, I didn't see that. Yeah. Um, it was it was funny because it was just so fast, and I caught it because. Uh, people are pointing it out online. And I was like, "Oh, they pointed it out before I had a chance to actually watch the episode." Thanks, internet. Oh. Um, well, that that's the first, that's the the book she's reading in the in the pilot of Lois and Clark, correct? No, it's the one she re- She's the one she writes. It's the character she creates. Oh, okay. In season four, when she gets her head injury, she thinks she is uh, Wanda Detroit. 
Gotcha. And then uh, in a previous episode, we didn't mention this. It was in my notes, and I totally missed it. But um, there is, behind when Superman's fighting Onomatopoeia, there is an Eckworth uh, like tanker truck, which is a Superboy reference to the man that Lex Luthor basically becomes in season two of Superboy. Oh. Yeah, I had that, and then I just missed it. What happens when you're busy <laughs> and you, <laughs> you take notes, but then time goes by and then you're like, wait, where are my notes? But it should be better now that, uh, what do you call it? School's out and everything. So I'm not spinning around in my wheels like a crazy person. But all right. Anything else, James? We're, I'm exhausted tonight. I apologize, people, but my kids just ran me like a rat. Oh, yeah. I had a long weekend and long couple of days at work. Yeah, I'm pretty I'm pretty worn myself, but uh, I was excited to, to get on and talk tonight. So Yeah, we had to get on and talk. It's been too long. So, all right, everybody. Thanks for joining us, me and James. We're going to get out here and get some sleep because we're old. Good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and remember. <coughs> we're going to press pause and hear a few words from our other podcasts on Press Play Podcast Network. Hello, Brooks here with the Books with Brooks monthly book club podcast. Here's how Books with Brooks works. We read one book a month and then we talk about it. Classics like Stephen King's The Shining, debut novels like We Are the Brennans by Tracy Lang, and tons of other compelling, life-changing stories, one book and one month at a time. So come read along with us and then listen in. Before we start this episode of Krypton Report, I want to take a moment and just give a shout out here to our Patreon. I know what you're thinking. Gosh, everyone's asking for money, and I get it. But our Patreon is only a dollar. One dollar a month that helps us keep the podcast going, and what we do is we try to find interesting shows and topics and whatever we want to talk about. We've done, as of this little thing, our last recordings were on the Scream series. Brian and Tyler, that's me, do our own show where we record in the car, and it's kind of funny, and we talk about pop culture or whatever is going on. We also have the Supernatural podcast we've been reworking. It's taken some time just because of life. But we do movie commentaries as well. It's something that James and I have done, what we used to do on the main show that we've started doing here. So for $1 a month on our Patreon, you can get those shows. There's at least four a month. Also, there's my movie pitch show that I do. But also, what we want is if you're a Patreon, you can come on. You can come on the main show if you want. Or if there's something you want to come on and talk about, we can do it as a Patreon special. So all I want is for $1 a month, think about chipping in, joining our Patreon, and you have a voice to be a part of things. Follow the link in the link tree or in the show notes below, patreon.com slash kryptonreport. If you are like Tyler and James and can't get enough super talk, check out these other podcasts. Digging for Kryptonite, Supergirl Radio, The Last Sons of Krypton, The Superboy Legacy Podcast, All-Star Superfans, Superman the Animated Podcast, The Aspiring Kryptonians, Always Hold On to Smallville, The Geek of Steel, and Truth justice and hope remember to check out krypton report on all social media platforms go to linktree.com slash krypton report you find out all of our import this is dan jurgens and if you want to have a good time keep listening to the krypton report look up in the sky we just want to say if you've enjoyed this podcast please check out other podcasts on the press play podcast network one dollar a month you'll get extra special content that you don't get on the main show, like movie commentaries and whatever else comes out of our mouths. So check it out, patreon.com slash krypton.